Hello, this is Remy from the 3D Applications team. By following this tutorial, you will learn how to interactively create a segmentation of a 3D image. Please note that this tutorial provides only an example of usage of the segmentation editor, using only the features from the basic software package. More advanced features or usages of the segmentation editor are presented in other video tutorials or in the user's guide. A segmentation assigns a label to each pixel of the image, which describes the region or material associated with the pixel. The segmentation is stored in a separate data object called a label field. A segmentation is a prerequisite for surface model generation or accurate quantification such as volume measurement. Depending on the situation, pre-processing or image denoising should be performed before segmentation. The process of segmentation itself can be automatic or interactive depending on the input images and desired results. The segmentation editor is a workroom that provides a dedicated user interface for interactive segmentation tasks. We'll work on the file chocolate bar, which can be loaded from the folder data tutorials. Right click on the green icon and select edit new label field from the image segmentation section. This will automatically launch the segmentation workroom, thereby replacing the user interface. At the same time, and not currently visible, a new data object will be added to the project view which holds the segmentation results. The segmentation editor operates by default in four viewers mode. In this mode, three slice viewer with X, Y or Z orientations are shown together with a 3D viewer. Alternatively, single or 2D viewer layouts are possible. You can change the orientation of a 2D viewer by either selecting another orientation from the segmentation orientation menu or by clicking on the orientation presets in the viewer toolbar. In the slice viewers, you can use the slider at the bottom to scroll through the slices or roll the mouse wheel. You can also adjust the zoom for each slice viewer independently directly in the upper right corner of the corresponding viewer. For all viewers, you may adjust the color map using the display control tools. The general principle of the segmentation editor is to first use selection tools to select some pixels. Optionally, modify that selection using the grow or shrink buttons or the selection menu. And finally, assign that selection to a material. For instance, the paint tool allows to select pixels directly by painting them on the 2D slices. Selected pixels are shown with a red overlay in the slice viewer and also in red in the 3D viewer. The assignment to a material is done by selecting the material and pressing the plus button. Let's just clear this selection for the moment and see how we can segment that dataset. This tutorial presents one approach to segment this chocolate bar into four phases. The bar itself, composed of a chocolate coating, a layer of caramel and a mousse filling, as well as air bubbles. Let's start with a simple threshold. Select the Threshold tool from the Selection area of the Segmentation Editor's main panel. Adjust the masking range such that the blue mask includes the whole chocolate bar. Once a reasonable masking range is selected, let's then press Select Mask Voxel to perform the selection. Then select the target material and add the selection to that material. You may rename the material, change its color or appearance in the 2D viewers at any time by right-clicking on the material name. It appears that the chocolate bar contains many large air bubbles, which were not captured by the threshold operation. In order to capture them and assign them to a new material, let's first create that placeholder and name the material bubbles. In order to select the bubbles, a simple procedure can be to reselect the whole bar and then modify the selection to fill holes in 3D using the menu. If we now lock the material inside and assign the selection containing the bar and its holes into the bubbles material, then only the bubbles get assigned to the new material. 
as can be expected, the lock option prevents voxels belonging to a material from being relabeled. Don't forget to unlock the materials once you no longer need them locked. Please note that the segmentation editor offers the option to undo the recent action in case a mistake was made. At this stage, using the menu segmentation material statistics, we can already compute the volume of the chocolate bar and the amount of air inside it, as well as a few other basic measurements. More advanced measurements are available in other parts of the software and discussed in other tutorials. Let's continue with the segmentation and segment the mousse filling visible as a dark gray in the image in a new material. For this, we will use the magic wand tool. This tool basically grows a selection starting from the clicked pixel and propagating into adjacent pixels provided they respect the requested intensity range. A useful trick here to adjust the threshold value is to position the mouse cursor on the box and rotate the mouse wheel to adjust the value and update the display simultaneously. As the original image is fairly noisy, the obtained selection contains lots of holes and irregularities. In order to smooth them out, we will grow the selection three times, fill holes, and shrink the selection back. If only smoothing is intended, you should grow and shrink the same number of times. Now let's lock the bubbles material and assign the selection to the mousse material. In order to segment the caramel layer, since the difference of gray levels with the chocolate is very low and the noise is quite strong, we will rely on manual segmentation and use shape interpolation to accelerate this manual process. Let's start with one end of the layer, for example, this slice 286, and use the paint tool to select the caramel layer on that slice. Using Ctrl and left click, you can erase from the selection, and with a right click, you can fill the selected area that is enclosed by your selection. Now, let's move to an, a slice further away for example, slice 200, and select the caramel on that second layer. Now we can use the menu Selection Interpolate to interpolate the selection between those two slices. Please note that this interpolation operates only on the shape of the selection and does not take any grayscale information into account. We may use any selection tool for this interpolation process as long as we use only 2D selection and always in the same 2D viewer. For example, we can continue with the lasso tool in auto trace mode to process slice 100 and maybe the last slice. As long as only 2D parallel selections are being made, the interpolation will fill in the gaps between consecutive planes. Now let's lock the bubbles and the mousse materials and assign that selection to a new material, caramel. To finish with the segmentation, let's lock only the bubble material and use Smooth 3D to smooth out the label field while preserving the bubble. Of course, different types of images may require different strategies for performing the segmentation efficiently. More advanced interactive segmentation techniques are also presented in other tutorials. At this stage, the user can now come back to the project workroom, for example, to visualize the segmentation data, or to carry on with quantification or surface generation. These possibilities are also covered in other tutorials. 
The present tutorial introduces you with the main principles and tools of the segmentation editor and how to use them to perform interactive image segmentation. Thank you for following it and goodbye.